at Fuge's Wild Woods. Hey, Dennis. Hey, Bob. How are you? What a great shop. Oh, I'm so excited to be here today. Okay, this is the upstairs of Dennis's studio. And of course, this is Dennis. And Dennis, what are you going to teach us today? Well, Bob, I thought we would teach the uh, audience how to make these little mice. They're non-cheese eating mice. And they have a little slot in the back where you can put the name of the cheese, like Dodo, Stilton, or Camembert. And when you put pressure down on the mouse, instead of touching the cheese, you push down on the mouse with the one hand and you cut the cheese with the other. So this is what I call the Manhattan Mouse House. It's also made with, I think, 37 different mice. And property prices in Manhattan are so high that even the mice have to live in high rises. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all made out of different woods. You can see the names down there. There's a African Blackwood family, a Red Heart family, a Oak family. They've even got their own little swimming pool to swim at, a little umbrella. <laughs> you can see here there's a little sign as well that says no cats allowed. So it's a proper little condo for mice. Outstanding. Of course, quite a stir at the AAW Symposium in Raleigh, North Carolina. It was the most whimsical piece i think people call it okay fantastic terrific creativity let's get down in the shop and make a couple okay dennis so uh, let's go through your process how you turn these so what i like to do is find an interesting piece of wood i think this is a piece of cherry and each mouse takes about an inch to an inch and a half so this is a two inch section two inch section and that's going to go into the chuck so then you just feed it into the chuck Tighten your chuck slightly and bring your tailstock up into that little hole, that little dimple that you make in the front so that you know that your piece of wood is, is sitting properly. There we go, it's in this little hole. So now you can back the chuck off slightly, give the tailstock a little bit of pressure and then tighten everything up in the, heads, in the chuck. I like to tighten both sides of the chuck so that I know I'm really, really tight. So folks, what I'm going to use for this project is a spindle gouge. It's a very similar to a bowl gouge, but it's got a shallower flute and it's got a steeper angle on the front. And it's going to be a lot of bevel rubbing cuts. I'm going to get my lathe going at the fastest speed I can. Get my helmet set. So when you're using a spindle gouge, it's all about the wrist. You've got to get this wrist turning so that your bevel is constantly in contact with the wood. And you follow it all the way down to the front. Bevel really engaged. When you want to do the back of the mouse, it's the same. It's little bevel rubbing cuts from various sides. And this back hand of yours, the right hand in my case, is doing all the controlling to keep make sure that bevel is in contact. Okay, time Okay, 
Right, let's talk. Yep. So folks, you can see there's still a couple of grooves and a little a couple of humps and bumps. And I've left this bottom of the mouse about a half inch so that I can actually work on the mouse without it snapping off the piece of wood. So you leave a good half inch on that side. Now I'll just sand it with my orbital sander. So once you're down to about a 1000 grit finish, you'll turn your lathe speed down. Then I may like to make a line about a quarter of an inch, maybe a fat, a fat quarter of an inch in, and then another quarter of an inch in there. So the first row is where the eyes will go, and the second row is where the ears will go. So that you'll then study your mouse and find out which is the most interesting side. I think this darker side of this particular mouse is better than the light side. So you dial across to the uh, dark side, switch this air off, and then on that annual ring you'll punch a hole, and I like to use these little punches that have got springs in them. You can buy them I think for $3 at Harbor Freight, and you'll just punch two holes for the eyes, then back off about a quarter of an inch back from that, a hole for the ear, and a hole for this ear. Then I let Michaels decide what drill I use. Because I use these little Michaels beads for the eyes, and this is a three, three thirty seconds inch uh, drill, fits these little beads. You'll see me using those later. And then I drill a little hole about half the depth of the bead so that the bead actually sticks a little bit proud. So it's just a very, very shallow little hole for the eyes. Okay. For the ears, I like to use a slightly bigger drill. I think it's a, let me just get my piece here. I think it's a 7 64th drill that I use for the ears and the tail. This you can drill a good quarter of an inch deep. It really doesn't matter the depth of this hole as long as you don't drill it all the way through. And one of my latest additions is to make that little slot for the name card behind. And I li like to use one of these little coping saws with a very narrow blade on it. And I angle it towards the front so that the card actually sits nicely. And I just put it about a quarter of an inch behind the ears. It doesn't need to be too deep, it's just got to hold the little card. Then I switch on the lathe. And I get rid of the pencil marks. And I also like to just sand that little slot as well while I've got the sandpaper there. Just to take out any of the fun little fuzzy bits that are in that slot. Just a little bit of 1000 grit sandpaper. Now for the back of the mouse I like to use, it's a, like a quarter inch spindle gouge, it's a much smaller spindle gouge and I can get in really nicely at the back of the mouse. Once more little bevel rubbing cuts from both sides. Just gliding the bevel down the back of the mouse. When I get down to about an eighth of an inch, I like to stop and use the sandpaper again. Otherwise, there's a lot of manual sanding on the back of that mouse. So once I'm out down to about that, I get my sandpaper in behind the back of the mouse and do all the sanding that's necessary. Otherwise, you've just got a lot of hand sanding. 
And folks, once you've finished your mouse to 1000 grit and you've got your slots for your card and your ears and everything, it's just a matter of holding it and parting it off at the back here. Uh, once more, I take this little thin spindle gouge, get myself a little bit of room on this side, whoopsie. Get myself a little bit of room on that side, and then just go in very gently and part the mouse off. There we are. Now what I like to do is then get my sanding pad again. So then once I've sanded the tail of the mouse or the back of the mouse nicely, I like to put the spring punch in again just to create a little divot for my drill to go in. And once more, I try to drill at least a half inch hole in here. My customers have told me that they pick their mouse up by the tail. So you want to make the tail hole quite deep so that you can feed quite a bit of leather in there. So now to put the flat on the mouse, you've got to decide whether you want to have a mouse with attitude or not. And I've just got these little MDF sanding pads with various grits on. And you want to sand it as close to the tail and so that the mouse sits upright. And we'll show you that. You just sand a small flat and then stand your mouse on the flat and decide whether that's the right place for the flat. I think that's got a slight tilt to the head and it's standing nicely up. So I think that's a good place to put the flat. So then you just make it a good half inch base to it. If you're not happy with that particular flat, you can move the flat to a different area. And you can get a mouse looking straight at you or one with a lot of attitude. I think that's quite a nice attitudinal mouse. He's got a slight twist to his head. And I think he's looking good. If you don't have one of these MDF sanders, but you do have these Ariston 3-inch wheels, um, sanding, sanding wheels, they fit very nicely. There's a metal part to the back of the Ariston, and they fit nicely into a 3-inch um, chuck. So you can just clamp it in the chuck, and you can use that to, in fact, sand the flat on your mouse. And now you can move through the grits. I think this is a 220 grit. I can move all the way up to 600 just using these uh, sanding pads. So then if I don't sign the mouse, I, I um, would put Danish oil on at this stage. If I'm going to sign it with my name at the bottom just as a little memory or a little calling card, then I would sign the bottom of the mouse. But I put on two coats of Watka Danish oil space two days apart. So one coat, wait for two hours, wipe the excess oil off, and then a second coat two days later, and then I buff it with a BL buffing system, and I'll show you that in a couple of minutes. But you can see the beautiful shine that is on that cherry mouse. Then once you're ready to make the ears for the mouse, you want to get one of these half inch punches this one is made in Taiwan, so I think it cost me a princely sum of $20. And you can just tap out one ear, two ears, and you've got the two ears for your mice. I always like to do it on a piece of MDF so that you don't damage the surface behind you. So always put a piece of wood on top before you punch it out. So there my two ears are. With the tail, you'll just want to make a slice with a pair of scissors, sort of tapering slice. If you can get your wife's dress scissors that are really sharp, that would be good. You just want to cut a tail that looks something like that. Broad at the top, tapering down to a thin little mouse tail. Now that's all the components we, we now need. So folks, then I buff my button, my mice always using the beer buffing system. 
and I've learned that I go through the triple E wax wheels really fast. You can see this is one of the original ones I, I had and how small it is compared to, to the big one. And then that's the next one that I had uh, made it out of a pair of jeans. So I find cutting up the jeans into circles and then using the screw from the beel buffing system creates a beautiful wheel for the triple E wax because you use that quite often and it, it really rips through your wheels. The white diamond wax, this is still my original wheel. You can see it doesn't go down nearly as fast. And the Canuba wax wheel as well doesn't go down nearly as fast. So I do make these up out of uh, jeans and these I buy from the Beal Buffing System Company. So then I love to buff all my mice with the Beal Buffing System. The Tripoli wax is this dirty wax that you get. So you put the dirty wax on. And I found using a little brad oil that you can stick up the um, mouse's behind or the hole for the tail is really good. Otherwise you lose your mouse and it spins out of control around your workshop. So do make a little uh, brad oil like that that fits in that hole so that you can actually buff your mouse without it flying around the workshop. You see how it spins out of control. Okay. And once you're done there, you can buff your fingernails if you want to, to get some really shiny fingernails. Turn your wheel into reverse. Spin it off. Turn it into forward motion and spin the white diamond wheel on. A little bit of white diamond wax on. One small mouse. A little brad all in the tail hole. And you can see how the mouse is spinning in my hands there as I buff it. As I say, I do everything with this beer buffing system because it adds amazing value to the item that you make. And to reverse, get the wheel off. Turn the wax wheel on. Now the Carnuba wax is the hardest wax in the world. It's made from a palm tree. Just stop there. And obviously the final finish on the beer buffing system is the Carnuba wax. It's the hardest wax in the world. So people can handle your items all day and no fingerprints will appear on, the, on your piece of work. And it's a very, very thin form of wax that goes on. It tends to be a little bit more grabby, so you have to be careful that your mouse doesn't spin out of control. But we use Carnuba wax a lot in the pharmaceutical industry for polishing the tablets, so it's a very safe wax to use. You can see the beautiful shine you get on your mouse. Absolutely amazing. So now to finish off your mice, your, your, your mouse, you'll need the thin super glue and the medium super glue. Uh, I buy them from CPH Industries. And the first thing I do is to put a dab of medium super glue in each eye socket. You can see these lovely little tips that you can get from CPH Industries as well. Put a dab of glue into each eye socket. Then I take my little brad oil and I pick up a, an eye and I put the eye in. If you use a nice shiny light, you'll see that that hole of the eye also points towards the front. If not, you rotate it around so that it does. That's the eyes in. The beauty of having some Carnuba wax on is now you can just wipe off any excess glue that there is and you're good. You can see those little eyes glistening nicely. Then I find for the ears, it's quite an interesting technique. You have to put the ear over the hole, just over the hole, a little bit further than the hole. And then you take your little brad oil and you push it into the, the hole and the ear pops up just like a little Mickey Mouse ear. And then you wiggle your brad oil to get it out and out it comes. Then the next ear goes in the same way Overshoot the hole ever so slightly. Take your brad oil and push it home. That's a nice tight fit. 
wiggle your brad all and you're done. Now I like to take the thin super glue and just drizzle a good few drops into each ear. One ear is done. And those ears will go nowhere now. Okay, then I like to let those dry a little bit. What we'll do is we'll accelerate those with accelerator for this particular project. But normally I just let them sit and I do 20 mice at a time. We'll just accelerate them with this star bond. Just a little bit of star bond on there. Then it's a case of getting the tail in. Now the tail you need to push in fairly well. So what I like to do is I like to lay the tail over the back of the mouse, get my little brad oil, and then I like to feed a good half inch of leather into that tail so that it never comes out. You can see me pushing away there and you can see that was a good quarter of an inch it went in and that's another quarter of an inch. So that tail hopefully shouldn't come out at all, especially once I put a little bit of glue in there. So then I have my tail in. Then I take the thin super glue spout and just create a little hole there for it to go in. I take the thin super glue spout, put it right in that hole, and I feed quite a lot of super glue in. You can see it drizzling in nicely. In the excess I just wipe off. Now a key tip is to actually put the mouse down on a surface with its ears pointing down and the tail over the top like that. If you let it dry any other way then that the glue wicks up the tail, the tail gets hard and when you put your mouse down like that it won't sit down flat because the tail has been glued up. So you want to actually lay it over like that, line up all your mice, mice and then you're all done. I'll just spritz that with an uh, accelerator again just so that we see the end project. So now your mouse can sit beautifully and you can put a little card in. I've also used these for Christmas dinners or birthday parties where I put the name of the person that's sitting at the table in. So say it's Dennis and Bob. Their little mouse is, is giving them their place at the table. And I found every single mouse at the end of the dinner disappears. <laughs> so they are really, really cute. Yep. You can use all sorts of different materials. This is a piece of oak and you can see the beautiful coloration that you get. So then once you've mastered making a mouse, you can then leave a little ring of wood and carve it. So that's the church mouse with a little cross on the top. This is Rocket Mouse. <laughs> you can see he's shaped like a rocket. This is NFL Mouse. He's got the NFL uniform on. This is Madeline Mouse. She's a bit top heavy. But that's a really curvaceous Marilyn Mouse. This is Charlize. Charlize Theron Mouse. She's got a little bikini on. And this is the Donald. He's got the ginger comb over. <laughs> so you can have fun making your mice out of different shapes. So... It really is a fun project. Once you know how to make a mouse, you can decorate them also in all different styles. The only thing that's limited is your imagination. That's it. Fantastic. So Bob, thanks for coming over to Fugis Wildwoods this afternoon or this morning and filming these two projects. It's been lovely having you. And I teach at the same location, Fugis Wildwoods. I also have a website called timeforyou.net. You can simply look up Dennis Fuge on the internet and it'll take you to timeforyou.net. You can see the different projects that I make. So it's really been a fun time to teach you, Bob, and show you everything that I have at Fuge's Wildwoods. Well, thanks so. a lot for the invite, Dennis, and it's always a lot of fun to come visit you and uh, spend some time in your shop. So for all you turners out there, get out in the shop and make some of these mice. They're gorgeous. People love them. Well, that was sure a lot of fun hanging out with Dennis Fuse today. Here's how to get a hold of Dennis. Dennis is a teacher as well as an artisan. If you need to get a hold of him for a lesson or to buy one of his products, you can contact him on his email address. So thanks for watching, and you know the drill. If you like my content, please like, comment, and subscribe. 
And until next time, I'll see you on another episode of Bob's Woodshop. <laughs>